So I'll call this regular meeting of January the 7th, 2020 uh, to order. <clears throat> Resolved that the agenda for the January 7th, 2020 regular meeting of council be accepted. Moved by Deputy Mayor Tony, seconded by Councillor Gray. All in favor, it's carried. Resolved that the minutes of the December 17th, 2019 regular meeting of council be uh, be received and approved. Moved by Councillor Friesen and seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 4.1. Resolve that resolve variation order 1 2020 proposing to reduce the minimum site requirement on lot 5 of unregistered plan from 60 feet to 41.75 feet be approved. Moved by Deputy Mayor Bertoni, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion, Councillor Delorier, and then Councillor Morio. So, so this is the lot that's in bold on, yeah. the, on, the, on the drawing? Yeah. And we're gonna try and sell that eventually? No, no, this is the, in order to register the subdivision, yeah. our zoning uh, bylaw says that residential properties have to be a minimum of uh, 60 foot site width. Yeah that lot is less than 60 feet. So in order to register it, even though it's been developed, we need a variance. The province requires a variance to register the yeah. site. Okay. Which one is it? Of course. Uh, are you done that? No. Okay. Councilor Delorey is still on. So, so the, you said it's already developed, as in, but there's no, there's no structures on there. Yeah, that's where the Dixie lift station is. Okay. Um, Okay, so we're not going to sell that for. No. Okay, because I'm like, who the heck's going to buy that piece of yeah. property? Council Morio? Okay. Well, that answers my question. It's like, why would we have a separate lot? We you know, just combine with 105 and create a bigger lot there. But if that's already a town owned one, then, yeah. then there's no need. Okay. But there's a building on there. And Councilor yes. Gray? No, I, was, I, 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 I couldn't figure out where it was. I was, I was looking at it, I looked at this map for. Okay. Okay. So, so that property will never ever sell because that's the list station on there. That's right? correct. Yeah. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? <laughs> Moving down to communication 6.1, you see a request uh, from uh, Manitoba's Bozeman Municipality in regards to the meeting. Uh, if you want to get together, discuss. Um, rise and the future of rise and everything else. So um, we have a couple of dates that we can select to meet. Any discussion on this? The dates in? Okay, yeah, so they're yes. suggesting the dates? No okay. dates are suggested, suggested at this point. The Minnetonis is setting the dates tonight that they're available. Oh, right. And we just have to gather up what dates the majority of our council will be available in the next couple of weeks. Well, sorry, it's a bit ad hoc, but this is what I mean. Well, it's, what not, your fault. it's not your fault that you get this. But, okay, Councillor Gray. Yeah, well, I'm not, obviously, for the next couple, couple of weeks, I'm not going to be available unless we do some attention. I, unless I attend my telephone. I'm obviously incredibly interested in this issue. But I, I'm also concerned with ad hoc, piece by piece, negotiation of these things it, 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 it's it's and I, I don't necessarily disagree that this is an important issue but surely we should be having a larger discussion about services generally and and i don't understand why we would why we would parse it off piece by piece i don't see it as in the town of swanever's interest it, it's certainly in the town our and minotaurus and bozeman's interest and possibly in the arms of Swan Valley West's interest. But from our perspective, what's the advantage of dealing with individual little pieces where, and we already had the effect of that at the watershed, in my view. I, I don't know if there any dis decision would ever come out of this meeting, to be honest with you. I would hope that we could probably come to some kind of consensus, but as far as voting and deciding, I, Mr. Crow and I had a discussion about that, yesterday but i think that 
you know, we, I think we need to be present just to, you know, to hear what they have to say and what our input has to be and, and, and where we want this to go because I think that if we don't attend, then I think that that would be a bad thing as well. Um, correct me if I'm wrong or whatever, um, but hasn't been notifications or whatever sent to outstanding municipalities that you had time frame to pay up your current dues and if you're not. So I don't know what the relevances of this meeting is. It's like either you're in or you're out. Uh, this debate, if it's going forward, if you don't want to be part of the organization, don't pay your dues, give the notice as to what's been thing, and have a nice day. Well, mm -hmm. under the Constitution of RISE, they're members, they continue to be members, but they're non-voting members. So when men goes, well, as far as I know, unless, unless a bunch of money came in in the last week, part of, and I would think I that if that had happened, Stacy might have let us know that, you know, we've gotten a hundred thousand, whatever it is, $70,000. <coughs> so unless that's happened, Swan Valley West and the RM of Influence Bozeman, as far as I'm concerned, have no vote. It's as simple as that. So we can have a discussion, but until they pay their dues. That's what, that's what I'm getting at. There's, yeah. Uh, yeah I 100% agree with that statement. And I don't think that there's anything that this meeting um, that they're wanting to have is going to amount to anything. The RISE board put out the mandate of what you needed to do for 2019. If you've paid that and, um, the rise board will continue and present a budget and then you can have that discussion if that's something that needs to happen but i until you put your money where your until you sign your put your money where your mouth is i, I don't i don't feel that this meeting is necessary so since the only voting members now is us in mountain what well i i shouldn't say that I, maybe money did come in i, I can't say that. I presumably it still could come in. They could write the check and then they would become voting members again. Yes. That's the problem. The problem with the Constitution. We, we, we did this so that we did this. So what, at the next meeting we were going to get to, we were going to propose an annual meeting and propose an amendment to the Constitution. But we haven't had a rise meeting this year since December 31st. Uh, we haven't had a rise meeting. So I can't confirm or not confirm that money was paid or not paid. So I think the Constitution also refers to that any am amendments have to be, you have to have your AGM within so many days of January 1st, I think within the first three months. Yeah, I can't remember. And, no, the first Appropriations Act requires it. And then you also have to have your proposed amendments out so many days prior to that. You have to even notice. Uh, is somebody drafting the proposed amendments right now that they'll be out in well, time for yeah, this? I, I think, okay, so uh, my recollection, I, again, I have to look at it again. I, I, I look at it and then I, I don't have it in front of me. But my recollection is that that's the annual meeting. But constitutional amendments can be done pursuant to the Corporations Act by any special meeting. You have to do, I think it's between 25 and 75 days or something like there's a range of dates of notice you have to give under the act unless it's in the constitution so we'll have to look at the constitution but yeah well, the constitution does have wording on on the procedure for a constitutional amendment to arise in there i remember reading that and, and, well there's a notice provision for notices i remember that i don't remember it having to be in an annual general meeting but that's we member of meeting for members for sure i guess my concern is we're going to be stuck in the same place a year from now. Like, if there's no action on this, either right. press folds or it doesn't fold, or we're going to be the same place. Like, and I and, I, and I said last year, I'm not voting for another budget that has even as much as last year. If if, if there's not some sort of movement on it, this because this is crazy. I agree with that. We all agree. Mr. Uh, could I suggest that by attending this meeting, the council wouldn't be out anything other than a few dollars to pay to go to the meeting? I, I personally think it's I think it would be beneficial to us to at least attend it to hear what it's all about. These are potential still funding partners, you know, that they may want to still step up. But you know, at the, at the end of the day, that all our municipalities fund into this board, and 
we will make the decision as a, as a as group if, if they don't want to be members anymore then so be it then we know where we stand and and at that meeting we'll be able to hear everybody out i don't think it's, a, it's such a bad thing to attend it and i think that that's great so hey guys it's the last time we're going to do this you pay out or you're in it or we're not coming to any more meetings no no last year was the last time i hear it, but this is the last last time no, 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 last year was the last time. For me, anyway. So we've never, but we've never gotten together as a whole group, entire group. We just got together three months ago at G5. What are you I, talking about? But I realized Rise was on the agenda. But I don't think that everybody has. Well, exactly. Why was it not on the agenda? It was on the agenda. We talked about Rise at the hall okay. out there. Well, you know what? I, I, whatever council wants to do. But I don't think it's a bad thing to attend this. Well, oh, I, I totally agree, but. I as long as the purpose of attending is to listen, what's the harm? What I don't, what I fear, is that they will expect us to be able to speak in response to their points. I can speak to you in response to it from my point of view. You no, know, I'm not voting for another budget that has. Okay, I think line that we just, if you can raise your hand when you want to speak, please. I'm sorry. So no, that, no, it's my fault. Um, well, yeah, I, I, like I, I think it really depends on what, I mean, I think we're going to do economic development. We've all agreed on that, right? And we, and, but is RISE effective in the sense that we have partners? If we have partners, then we have partners. If we don't have partners, we don't have partners. It's as simple as that. And and one way or another, we're going to do economic development. So um, either they're in with the agreements that we have, multi-year agreements that, we, that we're not going to have this crap every year that we have to go through this fight, or they're not. It's as simple as that, and 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 we can listen as long as. But my, my my concern is because you know, that those two municipalities, with the greatest respect to the councils there, have a tendency to try and uh, bully us into um, certain things. If you don't do this, we'll pull out of fire protection. If you don't do this, we'll do this. We'll, and you go, oh, how you guys <coughs> come up with a rational reason for doing something? or say you're not in it. It doesn't make any difference. Let's pick two days because I think we're all no, no, they, they're going to be against Tom or don't come. I don't think they said that. I think they did. Look at the last line. Look at the penultimate paragraph. Deputy Mayor with Tony. Um, just in regards to this, and I, I mean, I, I just don't understand. I, I mean, it's worth listening to, but what really are we going to listen to? It's not. We're not going to be listening to anything moving forward because they haven't paid going backwards. So, <laughs> I mean, in my mind, in my mind, what is there to discuss? It's as black and white as it can be. If you want to discuss future, pay your bill, we'll discuss future. But until then, what's there to discuss? Council Gray. I agree with Council Gloria on this point. Um, if they came up and paid their money, that would not be sufficient for me. I agree. We have to have an agreement that we're not going to be in this fight every year. Because I just, I think, of all the reasons I ran for council, one of them wasn't to end up in a perpetual battle with two other municipalities about funding of a variety of things. That just is beyond me, how we're in this position year after year. And so for me, I, uh, I agree with Councilor Glory entirely. They, either they're in, in the sense that they're in the way everybody else, the way Mountain and we are in, or they're not. I don't care. Councilor Moore. Well, so I, th I think like the, there's there's a number of factors here, and like one of them is like either you're in or you're out by paying your dues and stuff. And you, I'm, I'm long term, 100 percent agree with that. Uh, like here, I think they're trying to. To it's like type of direction, like of what the mandate of RISE is, and stuff like that. Well, currently, as I said, if you have a paid your dues, well, you you don't have a say on what the mandate is of RISE until you're a full paid, up to date member and the commitment is there. And then, where um, you can have that further discussion as to what the mandate of RISE will be as to its projects and stuff like that. And that can be discussed amongst all duly paid participating members. And that could be at a, a G5 meeting where it's not just representative, but a whole open, frank discussion um, for it there. And I don't know if that's maybe their intention here is what they're trying to look at and try and bait them in. But 
I agree. Like we can attend a meeting and stuff like that. And we can respond saying, Hey, this is where it stands. Like you're in a reality, like, lay out the facts, cold blunt, like anybody can understand it. Um, and if you're not paying your dues up to date or, and then you're willing to do on a commitment, um, there's not much else to talk about. Yeah. It's great. That's um, clear, right? We've all agreed on this. So I'll say, let's go to the meeting and see what they got to say. And we'll say, we'll say what we just, we've all just said, every one of us. You're out of your own. There's one more thing that would like to be raised that we should turn our attention to, and that is the acquisition of the building, which I think they're having some difficulty with the school division. I, I, that's my, I, the rumor is that they're having some difficulty with the school division to necessarily agree that they were going to get it because they haven't got a, a defined plan. The whole point was that they were being transferred to a plan. So, um, and, and I do, it is my understanding from a counselor from there, Rise that their plan is to um, operate the um, incubator by way of them owning and controlling it and directing Rise. That is the Army of Minotaur's Bozeman. If that is their plan, I, I, I can't speak for the other directors of Rise, but I can tell you that um, as a director of Rise and as a counselor of the counselor, I would never agree with that. What would be the upside to us? being the lapdog of the arm of the Bozeman, of taking direction from them. Either they rent us back the building in its entirety and we manage it, or they don't. It's a, it, it, and again, that was, that was, we made that clear, I think, in, in sending it to them, that there are only two options. They take care of it. Knock yourselves out, it's fine. But they transfer it. Not ownership, but, but control. To, and, and because, and, and, and you, you know, it stuns me. Again, this is another example. We could easily have said an incubator is a great idea, but we need it in the town of Swan River because the logical sort of hub for the valley is Swan River. But that wasn't the position either Councillor uh, Councillor <laughs> Councillor when Tony or I took. We took the view this is a good thing for the entire valley. This is a logical place. There's some power things there. There are some advantages. It's only ten miles away. There are some reasons to leave it there, especially especially because of the building. But I, again, I, I can't imagine um, the Thomas one River agreeing to be part of a process where the armed and opponents gets to tell us what we have to spend. That seems ill-conceived. So I just alert everybody to that issue. I would, I would bet a hundred dollars are going to raise that issue. Okay, so if we're going to attend this, then we have to come up with some dates here. Dates that oh, no, are they're, they're supposed to come up with. They're going to discuss two dates and send it to us. Because they are, they also want us to advise them of dates we are not available. Oh, I see. Say that. Yeah, Harry lost last time. paragraph. Culture. It would be unavailable. Do your own council. Well, do your own council meetings. So the twenty first we're unavailable. Well, every Tuesday. Every Tuesday, pretty much. Yeah, every Tuesday. Yeah. Right. Right. That's. Uh, Johnny and I have a planning meeting on the thirteenth. So basically, if it, unless it conflicts with one of our other meetings or a subcommittee meeting, they can. Yeah, I, I, I would just other than our council meeting, and then if it's the fifteenth or whatever, maybe they can give us some options. Okay. <clears throat> So point one, resolve that the Director of Public Works report be received, moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, second by Councilor White. Discussion, questions? Wait, sorry, Mike. I'll wait for you, Councilor White. Just a, just a query, you guys are applying the moves today, Derek. Is there any uh, reason for that? We've got snow coming tomorrow, the next day. Yeah, Wednesday and Saturday. We had some complaints on the ruts on 9th, so yeah. it makes sense. Mike did send the gray arrow on the main, major high, on the major one. Just a main one. Okay, just a question. Thank you. And you mentioned in there, there were some issues at the well site. Uh, yeah, the very project management issues. We're dealing with the contractor and making sure he does what he needs to do. 
it doesn't work if the pumps are breaking down and crazy. No, 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 just, no operational issues, contracts. Okay, thank you. Good enough. Thank you. Uh, just uh, on, on the grading that you had mentioned from Councillor White, that I uh, had some people say that the uh, parking lanes around the Taylor uh, School were done. So you're preparing the landfill documents for advertising. There was talk some time ago about possibly having a, 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 a second price or a, or a complimentary bid for pickup as well. Is that on your radar for this or not? Complimentary bid? Well, yeah, like a like like a town proposal. No, for, well, the for for the pickup of pickup of garbage as well. Included in this? No. 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 That you mean all encompassing? Yeah, to include pickup, tendering of pickup of garbage. No, that's not included as one right now. I do remember that discussion. Do you remember that discussion? Are we? Are, are, is it plans to include it, or, or is we, it, are we past that point? No, we're not past any point right now. I need. I need some land file hours confirmed at the committee meeting, next committee meeting, before we can... I was going to say, maybe save that for a call meeting. Yeah. We need land for the hours. Yeah. Just to make it apples to apples. I had it on the agenda, but I removed it to discuss yeah. it at a cow meeting when I can present the, the town's proposal. When, when, when does this expire, the current one, April? Yeah. We have a... Just so we avoid what happened the last time, we already have an agreement sign with the current contractor for a monthly a monthly price in case it goes over we don't intend it to but so it'll go on on the same monthly price that we're paying now it is yeah okay or it comes from a great um just following up on that um and so it's going to go to the cow i'm not going to be here but i i thought we had talked about having and including at some point Recycling. I know we have OSS, but we have a, a cancellation clause in it. And my recollection was we were talking about um, contracting everything out um, and getting prices on that. And it may be that those may be the best prices to look at it. But that was my recollection of the discussion. That was about a, a year, not quite a year ago. We've been in the spring of last year. So, so running the landfill, waste collection, and recycle collection all in one. Well. Each part, I would assume, I, I, it's not my mind to do, but I would assume we would say that we are looking at all of these services. You can give us a bid for any one of them, you can give us a bid for all of them, and we'll look at, at all of them. The easiest solution for us would be if we had one operator who did everything, and we did just, I don't have to worry about it. This is our amount of money, and it, it, it doesn't matter if it's home force, it doesn't matter if it's a, a contracting out, but this is our, our best process. And that way, we only have one person to worry about. We don't have to, and, and everything is, is good. Now, I guess to, we do have a three-year agreement with OSS. Uh, yeah, I, I guess they would be confused if we put it over on our advertising for that. But I, I wouldn't want to do that, to just my opinion. But we can, like, we have the documents ready to ask for collection along with the landfill. That's not difficult to do. We can definitely do that. But to re resubmit for recycling, <coughs> we can. Perhaps, perhaps then what you do is you, you you coordinate this next tender on the landfill to expire at the same time as the OS, OSS tender, so that next door round you can do all three as a package. Yep, we can do that. And depending on who the successful bidder is, maybe they have a better price than OSS, or maybe OSS will be the successful bidder. And there's, there's things happening. I know we've been talking with Charles today regarding our municipal neighbors and their recycling options, their landfill options. It's, it's all coming to, uh, to the water surface in the coming months. What will be? Who's that? They're going to love expanding landfills in the fall. <clears throat> and they're, you know, one, one Swan Valley West contract for recycling is coming up at the end of the month. Are they going to continue with that or are they going to stop? What are they going to do? So we're offering to partner up to this and present to OSS and say, is there any of that? Is it advantageous for us to you know, so bring them in? Um, I also see your report there uh, invoicing for for uh, commercial properties that went out this week. Is that starting as of 
Jan 1, 2020? Uh, not January, no. The, the charging will start in April 1st. April so the first three months will be on taxes. On us. The budget will show that. And we, but we will send out a mock invoice so that people will get an idea of what it's going to be. Okay, other discussion? Um, just in regards to the cemetery and what is presented on our in front of us as well, that is something that I take, I, I trust that you addressed. I have talked to the, uh, to the resident. She's, she's very upset. Uh, you know, I, I can only tell her the truth. You know, they're, they're, they're marked trees. We do, we're, we're part of a program with the province to remove the DED trees. Uh, they're marked by this province's surveyors and we, we have to take them down. So, uh, we did rake up the remains, but there are pieces you know, of twigs and sawdust there, it doesn't look good. We left the stuff to remove, the work isn't finished, we'll have to remove the, the stuff in the, in the fall, early fall. But uh, this is the time that we take down our Dutch Elm disease trees and uh, that's all I can tell her is that we'll be back, we'll make it look good. And if we did remove the stuff now, it would be a big hole in the ground, which I think would be worse. But uh, if we had a little bit of a snowfall, maybe we would have covered some of that up and over Christmas time especially, but I do agree with twigs and sawdust everywhere. It was done in the middle of December and just a little snow. It looked, it looked messy, but uh, there's really nothing we can do. <coughs> I guess we freeze it. Sorry, Dave. We went to our limit on what we would do. I guess the other question was, um, can they replace, can they put another tree or two there when those stumps get removed? Yeah, I told her that, that as long as it's a, a, a native species and she lets us know because it is our property, uh, absolutely we will have a tree planting. Her other issue was the stone. It's flat. She wondered why she couldn't have that like this. Yeah, that was over a year ago she inquired on that and we had a cemetery policy that we follow that, that doesn't allow the size that she wanted. We just follow the but she could still have one that's shaped like this instead of flat. As long as it's within the, the cemetery policy that she has a copy of. What she wanted was inside the policy. It was bigger than. Okay. Thank you. Okay. For the discussion. Yes, it wasn't finished. <laughs> so it's okay. And I, I was pertaining to that one. Um, just in regards to the handy van, I see that we have somebody looking after that currently, and things are going well with that. I think that there's further discussion on that somewhere else. Um, other than that, I'm going easy on you today. I don't have anything else, Mr. Fulton. Thank you. Councilor Gray. Um, okay. There are a couple of things. Uh, first thing, just in terms of the plowing, I, I actually heard the opposite thing. I, I agree that there's going to snow, but most of our residents really like the idea that we're getting the snow off the streets and so on. Or the people that are talking to me anyway. Uh, that's, uh, so I'm all in favor of that. I'm just wondering about the cemetery. Why we, why do we cut the trees down in December if we can't remove the roots? Is there a reason we do it in December? Uh, mainly because we're not doing water and sewer digs, but uh, there is a time between, I can't remember the dates that you can not cut Dutch Elm trees down. Uh, we, I guess it could have been done in October, but we were busy. But we're doing, we're doing other things. There's, there's water breaks at the time we're finishing up. That's where most of our requests for, for uh, all of the new buildings, the water and sewer connections are. So we, we spent, from mid August through October, constant on uh, one or two connections. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, can we look at the, uh, I don't know what the policy is on the, so can we look at it? On the policy? Yeah, absolutely. Can we distribute it and we can know what it is so we can understand. Because there was a generalization <coughs> for having only flat ones and then having only a, a panel and whatever, and I know that's much easier, but I think for most people in Swan River, they want to have headstones that are being grown, so I'd like to see the policy and see what's going on with that. Yep. Um, 
or something else they saw in them or something. Um, the 2020 budget, um, I suppose this is as well for you. When, when are we getting to that? Uh, we're, we're always updating, especially when as I get further into the, you know, the landfill options and stuff, I have to create multiple options on depending on what we do <clears throat> to give Terry uh, on the minute updates. But as for the next meeting, I'll let you I had uh, suggested to Jose and Mario, our, our mayor, yesterday or today that uh, we'd like to get going on it in the next couple of weeks. I understand you're going on vacation. Yeah, but I, I just think we can, I'm going to have my email with me. I ever go anywhere and have my phone and I'm, I'm able to hook up or whatever but uh, so I'm vitally interested in the budget and I'm interested in getting it done sooner than last year well I actually had a hope that we would get it done for in January but that didn't happen that's fine it's all good but I just want to know when we're getting it done because it's for me it's a big deal we'll have another meeting before the end of this month okay so you'll send around the budget in advance so I can send written comments sure now, the handy van thing. Yeah, I have a good book. And I didn't realize the issue of the grievances potentially. But over Christmas and over holidays, can we raise with them the idea of, of non employees operating the handy van as long as you have the right proper licensing training um, for holidays? Because I, I have to tell you, this is the first year that my mother didn't get to spend Christmas with us, and there were other people who couldn't travel, travel with people, and it's irritating to be beyond words quite candidly. And it's particularly irritating that that it's because the union said they wouldn't allow it to be utility. So if that's the case, well, they would allow it, but they had to have their people do it, um, and, and they wouldn't do it, but they would. And they just made it would have made it jump through hoops to not do it um, and then would have grieved it. And so that behavior is not so sorry. much calmer today than I am than was that day. Sorry to interrupt, but the handyman is that part of this resolution then? Part of this report? Yeah. 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 It is. Why did you think it was some No, I I did I was it's it's actually the if you look at it, it's actually the mm -hmm. second and third lines. <laughs> Okay, go ahead then. So that's that's why I'm raising it now. Um, anyway, uh, can we raise that? Because I, I, at some point we need some agreement with them. Uh, either they're going to do it at some reasonable rate or they're going to allow other people to do it. Because, we, uh, I mean, the time people want to be out, in addition to medical appointments and so on, is for holidays and weekends. I am perfectly happy. In fact, I was happy when Cup Memorial told me, well, we do pick up on the weekends and, and on the evenings, and so I was happy with that. But holidays are a bigger problem, apparently. And it really is a problem if you only have one person. Yeah. So. I know me and Charles have been, we've been communicating with the, the union president regarding this exact issue. And, you know, obviously we haven't come to a, an agreement yet, but it, it will be brought up in negotiations. And, definitely we're striving towards some some play in that area in regards to a lot of argument people do argument well i'm not even suggesting that quite candidly i'm suggesting that there are uh, community groups and or individuals who would do it for free right. just because it's the right thing to do and we're a community of 40 40 100 people it's the right thing to do and, and the idea that somebody would hold us up for that. Again, my nature is not to push, my nature is not to say, well, that's good. My nature is to say, that's fine. We'll figure that out another way. So, so some, some ideas have been flipping around as far as what that will be looking like. We talked about that, and we'll discuss it in the call meeting, actually. Okay. So. And just a lot, or in regards to that, in under engineering, Mr. Poole, it says that there is a recommendation from you. Um, so I'm assuming that we will talk about that in that Cal meeting, or if it's further down, I haven't looked at the entire 
the agenda, but I do see a recommendation from you. Yeah, I did. I did put that recommendation prior to some conversations I've had with Charles, and there's just been some ideas floating around that, that may change that recommendation. I guess. Okay. But everything's on the table. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. I think it might be a good to put it as an agenda item on our next committee <coughs> of the whole to flesh that out as to what that whole program will look like. If we have the town continues with it, or are we able to secure uh, non-town forces um, to look after that program, or right. yeah. which would eliminate a lot of these um, barriers. Again, I perfectly willing to have a contract to change my position on that. Okay. So, any further discussion? All in favor? Oh, See why you asked me the next report. Yeah. It's just Sorry. Oh. I apologize. Yeah. Resolve that the November 2019 Swan River Anti Transit Band report be received as information. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolve of the Swan River Protection Services Report for December 2019 be received as information. Moved by Councillor White. Seconded by Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Lentoni. Discussion? Councillor White. Two things. One is sort of important to me. Uh, it appears our fire chief can't issue parking tickets anymore. What's happening? Same issue we just discussed. We've got grievances that we. We, we paid the bargaining unit employees for him putting up tickets, so he was instructed not to give any more tickets, or else if we had to pay bargaining units two hours of time and a half whenever he does so. So where will we go with this? We we agreed to it in the CBA. It's, it's hard to argue that, so it's a, we're trying to work around that. It's, 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 to my mind, it's important to have the yellow spots or the handicapped parking spots available for those who need those spots. And he was doing it appeared to be an exemplary job. Makes some people upset, I guess, but it's pretty obvious with parking. Yeah, and it's, it's very well written in the CBA as well that the yeah. bargaining person must do those works, and when someone doesn't, we pay. So I'm, I'm just following the CBA. I know I'm not trying to be argumentative, but it, it's where we're at. Links in the garbage, which sort of got nothing to do with the town. I found it interesting. Uh, who reported the links? Who cares? It who was a school division, and it was there. You saw it? Yeah. Well, it was five links? Yeah, rooting in the garbage. Okay, any other questions? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.3 reports. Councillor Gray. Well, we haven't got a lot to report uh, over the Christmas season. Um, there haven't been uh, no meetings that I'm aware of anyway. Um, I, there, we have, um, we did have some good things going on in terms of, and I want to say congratulations on all the Christmas stuff and the new stuff. We, everything went well across town. It was really well done. Um, settlement services did their things and, and they were well attended. And I'm leaving on all these, well, I'm leaving for the Court of Appeal tomorrow. Court of Queen's Mansion and the Court of Appeal on Monday. And then I'm leaving on all these, so I won't see you again until February, the second meeting of February. I would like, and I don't know whether you need me to do this in writing or whether you can pass the resolution at a later point, but I do want permission to miss those two meetings. So, so you won't need to have that. It's the third you will, but not those two. I would like to have it, so if I get sick or something, I'll throw it but I have this. There's a provision for the, yeah. Yeah. You're, you're covered. You're okay. You said yeah. that to me, yeah. You know that has absolute notice anyway, so. Yeah. yeah. Enjoy your holiday. Councillor White. Just uh, similar. We met with some constituents today, Councilor Mori and I, with concerns about crime, but I think uh, that's evolving nicely with her collaborative work with the RCMP. So uh, I'm optimistic that a meeting will evolve in the future so the public can get involved in that too. 
uh, just uh, thinking about that, I, I think it's wonderful we'll to have the video, but I, I wonder about the legalities of videotaping a meeting without telling the people who come into the meeting that they're being videotaped. That came up today at the meeting because they said if they do not know they're going to be videotaped, they're not coming for fear of repercussions from the bad guys who see them saying things about the bad guys. Is there, do we have to have a sign up there this meeting is being videotaped? I think under Canadian law, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think in Canadian law, you can tape someone, you can record someone, as long as one person in that conversation knows that the recorder is happening. The reporter knows that. The okay, that's good to know. Thank you. Uh, the meeting that's coming during the future, uh, January 14th, is the budget consultation <laughs> meeting. So, uh, Council Morio and I are going to attend, so I think I would invite our community to go to those meetings uh, the 14th of January, 1 to 3 p.m. at the Westwood. And the council will be bringing concerns uh, that we have to the Minister of Finance. It's going to get popped up uh, Councilor Bobbick in the past when we talked about the jail. It appears the jail has fallen from favor with the government of the day at the moment. So it uh, was earmarked for Dauphin at one time. It was discussed about possibly going to Dauphin. So perhaps it's something we may want to follow up with the Minister of Justice when we talk with him also, because it, it's, uh, I heard recently on the Dauphin radio that it's not going to happen. Can, can we discuss that in, in camera afterwards? Sure. That's your thoughts, I don't think I want to share that. Good. That's fine. Uh, I would encourage uh, the mayor and, and his team to, and the CEO to nudge our three captain ministers, uh, health and uh, justice and resources. Uh, it's been three months. I was hoping they'd reply and say, hey guys, things are moving forward. And we talked earlier uh, about the possibility of sharps containers, more sharps containers being put up in our community. I'm not sure where that is. Is, is the town, do, do, are we doing that? We have them in our, in our properties. But we're, I guess I haven't tried in about a year, but uh, every private property that we ask permission to put it on declines due to they, due to they think it's going to bring them on their property. Uh, times have, I can tell, for example, I was on the CBC radio the other day, I'm, going to, I'm, I'm fabricating numbers here, but a year or two ago in Grand Island, <laughs> seven, plus or minus, seven sharps. A year or two later, 207. So with this, all those issues with crime, with serious things happening related to methamphetamines, with related to sharps. Little children are picking them up, stepping on them, etc. So I think our, maybe they didn't look two years ago, except that too. But it's certainly a, an issue that I think our town has to be more I think our private citizen might, because times have changed, be more responsible than we want to. We can in the spring inquire again with those yeah. with some areas, absolutely. We'll put more up at our properties too, like the, the playground for the little kids are walking around bare feet holding smokes. And since we hand out needles for free, yeah. more and more, this this is going to be a byproduct of that. You'll find it. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nothing to report, just Merry Christmas to everybody and Happy New Year and glad to be back at her. Well, I guess the only thing is, uh, seeing as 2019 is over, uh, our shared service agreement's expired and I sent an email to Charles and CC to all the rest of you about what kind of things we need as far as data to prep ourselves um, for negotiations, so I guess. I've already sent out emails uh, asking the different councils, okay. uh, informing them that these these uh, agreements have stalemated. Okay. And uh, so we are we are working on it, and okay. we will have our data in place for us. Okay. That's it for me. You have something there, Councilor Ray. We just uh, rising sort of out of that. Did we give notice under the water agreement? The water. The the. Well, oh, you're talking about the water agreement the, uh, with the RM of Swan Valley West. We were going to give notice. Notice to, to terminate, I thought. Yeah, yeah we had talked about that. Yeah, I remember. I remember talking about that. I got to didn't, check. I didn't think there was a resolution on it. I thought that was just an option on the table. There's not been a resolution on that. Um, can, can we put that for some discussion at some point on here? Because um, I have. 
I, I think it's part of the overall package. And, I, and when you talk about shared services, it reminded me that that's something we have to take. That's going to be a couple of years of notice. Yeah. And so I, I think we should start the process. We did discuss it. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I thought we semi agreed on it. But. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was it. Just I, we reminded you when you said that. Okay. It was on my list, but I didn't. Okay. Um, just want to, as well as everybody else, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Christos, or for all my Ukrainian friends out there who are celebrating Christmas, Ukrainian Christmas Day today. Um, just want to say again about what a what great job the museum did with their um, lights and the amount of traffic that went through there. It's um, in, incredible. I know that my little guy needed to see it. I you don't have enough fingers to count how many times we've driven through there, but um, yeah, great job there. I've got a, a, a point to talk about Councillor White's um, um, citizens coming to Council, and I want to encourage Council to form delegations and come to speak with council um, and that there should be no fear to come and speak. Um, it's your community. We're here to represent you and the community. Um, you should not be fearful of coming in to have that delegation with us. It is a public meeting as always. You are filmed, but um, it's a public meeting and I encourage you to, to uh, form delegations create paperwork and come to see us. Um, nothing will ever be solved if we don't have your um, concerns and your solution, possible solutions to issues. So long story short, don't be fearful to come and visit us. Um, I do have one issue that um, I need to, would like to discuss in camera. I, I forgot to talk about it in in the beginning when we did our agenda. It's in regards to um, uh, so-called inheritance. So I think that we may have to, we'll talk about it in, in camera. Um, that's all I have. Okay. Welcome back everybody to the table. That's a Mario. Um, no formal meetings, uh, just a, a number of uh, meetings, conversations with great pairs and um, listening to them and as Council Tony has, uh, has mentioned, they're encouraged that if they do have major issues and stuff like that, don't be afraid to come to Council with the delegation and whatnot. So uh, create that. So um, <coughs> I'll put out uh, a congratulations to uh, Dennis Volkov as of January one. Uh, he is the new um, executive director for Associations of Natural Municipalities. So um, our Council has a great working relationship with him already. Um, so I think that's going to be a definite advantage to our community and our area for him to um, move things along and work in partnership with the Association of Manitoba Municipalities. Um, and with his background and stuff like that, he can help us with a lot of our projects uh, by having another avenue to forward things into the legislature for us. So, um, and he's already committed um, to catch and come out on a number of occasions or to come out and visit our community and talk with us and visit with us. So, so congratulations to him on his uh, new position with the uh, Association of Natural Municipalities. Um, I've also put out to you guys and stuff like that, I will be going to the uh, provincial budget meeting here on January 14th. Um, and willing to speak if no one else wants to, uh, because I was gonna bring up a number of other issues uh, for that, but I can roll them all into a, a package um, to bring in behalf of council so that our views and, um, are out there. So, um, but I can send you guys, um, or we can discuss um, casually after what those topics could be and insight or anything else that people want to be brought up while we have our time allotted there, uh, where the actual ministers are here and listening. So, and with the assistance with uh, Mr. Paul, we can. Do some speaking notes up with that. And so. no, notice that there's a five minute time on the presentation. Serious. They, uh, I think in, in rural areas, so they might let you go to 10 or 15, but mm -hmm. the rule is five. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so I have a number of issues, um, um, and they're all active 
files that we already lobbied with there, but you, know, you have the airtime, you might as well take advantage of it when you can. So, um, one of the things I would like to ask council for a blessing for, um, as part of one of the committees I'm working on right now, uh, that there's a push by an organization here um, to secure a program where LPNs can be trained locally uh, in the community to get their registered nurse or their um, training. So instead of going out to Winnipeg or Brandon, um, our local LPNs can upgrade to the RN um, certification uh, for that. But that program needs some funding and this group has put together a proposal to put it in front of the province um, as part of their mandate uh, to get 200 more nurses within the province and the $2 billion that's been allocated to healthcare funding um, for programs and stuff like that is to, to put it out there. So they, they have put together a proposal and are asking if we had any issue uh, as a town to have the mayor take that proposal and just forward it on to get it in front of the ministers. Um, Minister Fielding and Minister of Health, uh, Cam Friesen. Uh, I know I've talked to uh, Mr. Eichler, um, the minister that's responsible for colleges already. He's excited about it. He wants to see a proposal. Um, so I just need, uh, before I formally ask the mayor uh, to do that, if council has any objections of us forwarding it on um, on behalf of this uh, group um, to get it out there. They know our expertise in communicating with ministries and things like that. So, any objection to that? No, I was just going to comment that that's another item that we can bring forward with our meeting with the minister that we're going to hopefully grant us in the next year yeah. shortly. Yeah. All right, so, because um, it, it ties into that and, it, and it's part of the recommendation from our, our MLA where he's been giving us information of some of these potential funds of, of cash that the province does have that's earmarked uh, to tap into for this program, which, as we know, um, healthcare is a major economic job uh, enterprise in the valley here. So, <coughs> but uh, the the cost of bringing in agency nurses uh, for one year would be is more than the actual cost of one course where we can have already. Uh, up to 20 RNs, and they have um, by just initial calculations already 12 people locally that would be interested in participating in this program where they can still be working at their full time jobs, running their families, um, but still upgrading their training and filling the RN shortage that we do have. So, um, because it, it is getting worse. So, it's just like our uh, CT scanner economic case, they put something very similar together where they put the data and hopefully we can go there. But um, the ministers and the powers that be um, that need to fund this, because uh, there's a prospective uh, uh, organization out there that would be willing to do it. Um, so if they run a similar program here in the past um, for a, a different uh, program. So it's not something new, it's tried and tested for the delivery method already. So if uh, council has no issue with that, I can forward the uh, proposal with a draft cover letter that uh, Americans sign and forward it off to these two ministers. So, and then I can share the proposal with uh, you guys also at the same time. So. And, uh, that's all I have. Okay, good work by the way. Ooh. And I'll be more than happy to, uh, to forward that off to Mr. Fielding and to Mr. Friesen. I could. Or I sorry. Thank you. Well, we're on the, at the topic, uh, Your Worship of Health, uh, relative to the LPNR, and I asked, and I think it was going to happen regardless. PMH has uh, sent a letter of support, or has written a letter of support for that program. In the last few days, I've been in contact with uh, Doug Lovstad, who's the president of University College of the North, is the local staff of UCM, and Dr. Clare's office staff here locally, relative to getting the uh, dental assistant program here. And they are, they're, there's, the template they're talking about is possibly because having people to move here just to train. They want to tr they come to train and pay them while they're here so they can offset the costs as opposed to uh, moving here and not having any income. So uh, that's that's in the works. They're looking at the, developing a different plan too. So 
If that happens, we get 10 young people training here also, for example, stay here and work because uh, the dental assistant uh, job, uh, they're not out there anymore. The rules are changing before they can pick a person off the street, right person, train them on site. I don't think they're going to allow that anymore. They're going to have to have the training. So uh, I stay positive on that one too. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Freeze. What do you say, Christelle? Christelle Yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, thank you for the kudos, Deputy uh, Mayor, about the museum lights. I hope you've all seen them because they're coming down this week. I had a meeting with uh, Communities of Care last night. It was 430 kids got Christmas gifts this past Christmas. The money donations were down, but the toy donations were up, so it kind of evened out. Um, Christmas meal at the Alps Hall. A big thank you to uh, Billy Wernick and Anna Fullerton. Those are the two ladies that organize it. They had 80 plus diners come and eat on Christmas Day at the Alps Hall. So good for them. Um, that's all. Thanks. Okay. Happy New Year. Oh. Well, Happy New Year to you <clears throat> and everybody else. Um, yeah, I, I, everything pretty much has been covered off. Uh, I've been uh, actually over the Christmas break, I had a chance to meet with one of the Reeds from the Swan Valley, or the Minotaurus Bozeman, and talking about uh, moving forward on a few issues that we need to talk about. Uh, met up with uh, Mr. Crowell yesterday to talk about things that are upcoming as far as uh, budget and, uh, and other issues that we need to start addressing. Um, moving forward, we're, we kind of had a lull there for a little bit, but we have to get back at the work again. So um, here we go. So um, a lot of things are going to be happening in the next few weeks that we have to, to deal with. So that's basically, that's for me. Uh, Mr. Kroll, I don't know if you had anything at all. Uh, no, I was on holiday, so. We'll let you know that I'm in mourning. I've lost my cat. So, so I decided to stay in Sault Ste. Marie. Oh, I bet you had died. And my wife's luggage stayed in Winnipeg. Oh. <laughs> a bull can't I'm sorry to hear that. When you get your cat back, that's awful. Oh, and bolt and I couldn't find it. Like, uh, maybe it's on its way to Swan River. Yeah, gotta be cutting. Optimistic. Okay, well, thank you. So we'll move on to uh, 8.1, where at the town of Swan River, utility operators require 6.0 continuing education credits uh, accumulated over the three, uh, course of three years to keep their level two required operating certification and whereas the MWWA conference and trade show gives 1.2 CEUs to attending operators and whereas the MWWA covers expenses for the board members and director of public works, Derek Poole is on the board of directors for the MWWA. Therefore, be it resolved that Derek Poole and two utility operators, two utility employees attend the MWWA a conference and trade show held in Brandon on February the 23rd through 20, uh, from, sorry, from February 23rd, 32, I can't even talk, 26, 2020. Moved by Deputy Leo Tony, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion, uh, Councillor Morino. Um, Mr. Poole, just to confirm that we do have coverage to for utility operations while three or two operators are yeah it's all claim will be covered so we'll cover that way okay further discussion all in favor opposed it's carried resolved that the proposed sub subdivision of part northeast one one quarter sections 21 36 27 west and numbered by Manitoba Municipal Government Community and Regional Planning Branch as file number 4455 to 1975-47 be hereby approved. Moved by 
Council Morio, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? I just have one question. <coughs> um, where, where is the access to Lot 1? Or proposed Lot 1? I think it's proposed Lot 1. Let me double check. I'm sorry. If you look at the map, at least this, this, this is right on the corner of um, <coughs> 10 by quick stop there. By quick stop, right? Yeah. That's that's what I understood. So if you look at the, actually the photo is better. Um, and I, I'm not sure where the existing ones are, it doesn't show up, but um, that lot, lot what the proposed lot, well, I'm sorry, lot two, I've got it back in front. The proposed lot two, I'm not sure where the access for that is. Now, I don't know that there was access before, but it was all in one big piece. So I'm just trying to, if there, that sold, isn't there going to need to be an access? Because the only access I know of to that lot is either through proposed lot one or through quick stop. Councilor Moore. I think looking at the photograph, uh, the east entrance to quick stop would be a joint. It looks like it's on the property. No, I don't think so, but I, I think it's entirely it's on. Big, where you go in is right there, not over here. Yeah, but if it looks like it's right there, then how would you access that lot? This is, it's all one lot. This, this is not separate. That's what he wants to do is divide it into no, He wants to separate this. <coughs> this is just no a distance money. You're talking about road allowance access. Well, uh, uh, as I understand no. it, you're not. Okay. You have to have an access one to the property from a municipal road. Not in between. And you can have a joint access that is a shared access. But I, as far as I know, that's not a shared access. I, I've never, I mean, the access isn't, unless I'm missing it, because there's the distance um, from the side of the building to the property line is about 40 feet. The entrance is well inside the 40 feet. That doesn't mean that they can't work something out, but I don't see a, anything here that says there's a caveat that allows for access to there. And so I'm concerned if there's a buyer, they're gonna come and say, we need an access. And there should, I have no problem with grooming it. It's just that there should be an access somewhere. Somehow we have to figure out how that access is going to work because there are two problems. The first is that um, most of the east side of that property is part of the turning lane. So I'm not thinking we're going to be happy about it, an access off the turning lane. And then after you turn onto going going westerly, so the south side is all on part of the lane that the arc that comes in. You know what I mean? And so there's going to be a, a, a real problem with creating an access because what we're going to have is people going across right where people are turning into there. So I'm, I'm just concerned that we make sure that that be, I'm perfectly willing to have it approved. I think it's a fantastic idea. I don't want to ever interfere with anybody doing your business, but I just want to make sure that we don't approve it. And then a year from now, somebody says, you guys approved it. I need an access. That's your problem. Councilman. And, and I think that we're seeing that already with that access happening. If you have traffic coming from the south, heading north and you have people coming into that um, off the turning lane from uh, 10 heading south, they're coming in heading west and you have somebody turning. We're already seeing congestion in that area. And I agree with Councillor Gray is that if we subdivide or allow this and absolutely, I think that we need our bases covered with access on this one first. Oh, 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 yeah, what I'm saying is that I would I would suggest that it should be approved, subject to finding a way of creating access. We'll, we'll definitely have to follow MIT specifications. There will be restrictions from accesses, uh, distance from intersections. They'll have to follow all of those restrictions. Right. So what I can do is inquire with the planning branch on, is that the intended access? Well, if, if that is, we need the highways has a. a Part of this, they they get the, the approval. So that's what I, I, I want. Yeah, to it would so we, I can inquire with planning on exactly what uh, the intention is. 
Council Moyo. Uh, looking at the report under Section 10 where it talks about access, uh, it says current access is through a municipal road, and then it says, will the lodge require a new driveway? And they got no as well, checked. I know, but that's my problem is that we all know those lots. There is no, right. so on the two municipal parts, there is no access that I'm aware of. Right. So, um, as for access, so I guess, um, Mr. Poole's say it's like since both east and southerly uh, sides are ordered by a provincial highway, um, it'll be up to the, that department and those uh, individuals to hammer out where access. the access, it wouldn't be our our party to. Yeah, if we get an answer that yes, the intention is to use the, the east quick stop lane, for example, some restaurant wants to go in there, do you have to design their property to use that access? But if we're approving it now, like I can find that answer out that yes, that is the access that they're using, and I can't see where else you're talking about. Uh, it's so like that, they... that is definitely, I would say, with pretty good certainty that that's the access they're talking about. We can confirm that. But, uh, we can we can put the condition on, but I would expect that that's absolutely the access that they're intended to use. <coughs> Quick stop access. Yeah. Well, that's not on their property then. Well, it's it is tough to see from this map. We would have to go out and find uh, how much that access is, or how much that property is coming. Yeah, couldn't access it from the north end. Couldn't access it from here. Right? Uh, Councilor well, White. I'm oh, sorry. Couldn't access it from the north, right from the where the roadside people are in there. With a caveat, yeah. What? With a caveat, but you, you might be able to do it through Burnside. You couldn't probably on the on the property line because there are a whole bunch of highways rules about how far you're going to have access is from particularly turning lanes. Right. So I think it might be problematic. I don't know, but I, I just I'm all in favor of it. I'm happy to have it done. As long as there's an access and we're not going to have a problem later, and and um, some history, some of us will know. But you all remember when um, the um, East View um, divided, and it was all good. Everybody was happy, and then new owners came into both of them, and all of a sudden there was a set of pylons ten feet from the East View restaurant that made everybody in town crazy and there were at least I, I don't know five or six people who hit pile on, hit those cement pylons because they were too close and people were coming out for lunch and in a hurry and whatever i'm just worried that we don't i just want someone to tell me yes we have an access we have a plan for an access that's lawful so that we're not in a situation because i have no doubt that they can work it out with the existing owners potentially of, of quick stop but i assume but what if that changes and that person says, no, you can't, they build a fence along their property line. What's the access? So I'll, to, I'll confirm that that is the act, the proposed access, there is access and where I can find out how much of that property is on that access. Right. Yeah. Or if they intend to secure a caveat to guarantee that access. Right. Or something. <clears throat> so do we defer this until we get that information? I move to table it until that information is provided. Okay. Um, I, I think we can. I, I think we can approve it because we can always withdraw the approval at a later point, can we not, Mr. Crow? There's a motion to table. Oh yeah, it's not debated. You're right. I'm sorry. Okay, so we table to our next meeting. Well, we have to vote on the motion to table. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> well, I could be wrong. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that you know what? I, I should learn that because I did that the last time around as well. Right. So, uh, motion to table is uh, all in favor. Opposed? T table to win the next meeting. Next meeting. Okay. Okay. Everybody vote on that? I don't know. Let's try that again. <laughs> motion, motion to the table. All in favor? Okay, here we go. We're table for the next meeting. Abstaining. Abstain. Okay. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> Right. It's a non. It's it's because it was non de debatable. I, I as I said, I, I think we could have done something. <coughs> it's non debatable. It's 
slide. I'm sorry to have raised it, actually. No, that's fine. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. <coughs> the result of the management prepared followed through the hiring process for a full-time reception clerk and a part-time oh. handy van driver. Moved by... Um, Councillor Morial. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Montoni. Discussion. Councillor Gray, Councillor... So are these positions that are on the chart like like how many how many clerks would we have now with this? We'll, we'll come back up to three. Okay, that's that's good. And the uh, part time driver is replacing Cal. Cal or Ken? Uh, well, you, you've got one person full time now. Is that person planning on staying there? It's it's a public works employee. Okay, so he's going back to public works, and we're hiring a part time. That's right. Okay. Councilor Glory, and answer my question. Is this clerk position the one that was advertised in last week's paper? Yeah, the. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> um, just in regards to going back to the handy handy uh, van driver, is this part of the re recommendation that we talked about earlier? It is because but, you and you and, said there were other issues and there are. I talked about that with Charles today. I did have I did put this on the agenda to get a resolution. I, I do hope council would trust that if we don't need to hire one, we won't. <coughs> okay, Councilor Moore. Um, so two parts um, with the handyman driver. I imagine they. I know Cal was a contract position, so that's not an employee, um, but that. But, and can part of his EFT was split between handyman and bylaw. So we imagine for the part time hours, I had to be coming from what was allocated from the handyman hours at part of his position. Um, and then maybe we look at while we sort out this whole handyman operations type thing, uh, instead of advertising this as a permanent, we advertise it as a term um, so that there is a definite end date like it'd be a three-month term a six-month term um, where it buys us time where you do, do have someone that can do this but it's a finite end of this program and we're not stuck with a permanent employee at the end um, if a resolution uh, comes through uh, for it through the negotiation process um, breakthrough with the union or some other proposal comes forward that's fruitful so, that's great um, um, so I would suggest uh, create um, whatever Say, say maybe a, a six month term, term. like yeah. it's advertise it as a six <clears throat> month term um, so that there's some ability so that it's not just a three month uh, thing but get someone that's for six months to keep that thing folded well um, we sort that whole pie out Thanks. Can, can I just suggest somewhat alternate wording resolve that council approve the hiring be full-time permanent reception clerk and the council approve the hiring of a part-time um, term six-month term handy driver driver and then th th we're approving the hiring of the positions and then it's entirely up to management to do that in accordance with our policies as we eventually develop them. And, and with that um, would it be like a, a half-time EFT like a 0.5 EFT like a part time, or We're, that's a good point. Because you want to specify that, like, what, would, like if we go off Ken's numbers, we just don't know if we, like, are you looking like Monday to Friday, 8 30 hours, hours a week? So we're probably looking at 80%, um, 80%, 75%. Yeah. But we, they only work when there's demand for it, right? Like, that's correct, yeah. So or how do you specify that? If, if you specify it as a three-quarter time, you can do that by, uh, you can say a point side, 0.75 EFT on an if and, and like, doesn't it, that, it doesn't have to be set hours, it'd be just in that pay, pay period, it's guaranteed 0.75. But what, if we, but what if we don't have any calls for handyman? We got then we're stuck with pay, that's the downside. What, why don't we just call it part-time and they won't get paid for what they were? That's casual. Casual something different in our contract. Right, but a, a, a part time is guaranteed a certain amount of hours. So. 
scroll, what do you want? You want the resolution you originally had? <laughs> no, actually, this was uh, this was Derek's. Actually. Yes. Oh. Okay. So, why so where are we on that uh, amendment? If 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 I, I do, we have to have the mover and the seconder agree to an amendment, or you can put that mover and not have to agree to it. I, you can go for a lower EFT and then you can add additional hours that you're not. But we're improving the number. So a, a pretty so casual term handy man driver? Yeah. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. 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 Okay. So uh, perhaps the mayor could read the resolution. Uh, it's updated. Yeah, just one second here. could just recycle yours again it should come up yes we got it. okay <clears throat> so i'll read the resolution result of the management prepare and follow through the hiring process for a full-time permanent reception clerk and a casual term handy van driver it's an amendment that the mover was council morio and the second by deputy mayor Wintoni. i'm good i'm fine with that i trust that management uh, will We'll do what they need to do. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> Nine point one result of council present an honorarium of one thousand dollars to Kevin Carter for his facilitation of my meetings at the Town of Swan River Strategic Plan Committee. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Make sure you thank him again for his help. <clears throat> Section 163 of the Municipal Act <coughs> provides that Council may adopt an interim operating budget to have effect only until Council adopts the operating budget for the fiscal year. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the following interim operating budget be adopted for the year 2020. General operating requirements, general government services, $400,000. Protective services, $750,000. Transportation services, $500,000. Environment health services, $700,000. Public health and welfare services, $100,000. Regional planning and development, $20,000. Resource conservation and industrial development, $65,000. Recreation and cultural services, $795,000. Fiscal services, $300,000. And water and sewer services, $750,000. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Councillor Gray. How long would this budget? Carries. Uh, it should carry us probably till uh, June. But I'm just going by my suggestion to Terry because he was in a bit of a panic. So I just told him to do 50% as the province suggests. So that's what. Uh, I would but our intention is not to have an interim budget until June. No, I, I, every uh, no every municipality does set an interim okay. until it's passed. So okay. We can continue to operate. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Result of the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts check number 25452 to 25541 for a total of 205,876 and 64 cents. Payroll account checks number 4583 to $4592 Payroll count checks number 4593 to 4597 for a total of 13,899 and 25 cents. Moved by Deputy Mayor Lentoni, seconded by <clears throat> Councillor Friesen. Discussion. Councillor Gray. I had two or three points. Um, the first is, and they're actually fairly small. So we're going to spend a lot of time. The first one is um, phone for pool deck supervisor. Two hundred one dollars. Is that a monthly fee? I do not know. I can get back okay. to you on that. Thanks. What number is it? Uh, <coughs> two five four nine one. 
two hundred one dollars. Just seems like a lot. Of I'm not sure why. What what the purpose is? There's a reason for that. Why are we paying for that? Rogers Wireless. Yeah, I, I don't understand why we're paying for it. But even if besides that, that seems like a lot for a monthly amount. Um, They're still on. And yeah, and the second thing I had. Uh, Check number 25512. Um, and I know we're going to have to discuss this in camera to some extent, but where are we with the lawsuit? Like, like it's another $1,000? There, there's an update and a question coming, but it came late. Okay. So I couldn't add, I was asked to add it, but actually it was pretty much last minute. And with things like that, I would like to be able to give it to you with enough time so that you can think it through in your, before you have to make any decisions. Okay. So it will be on the next meeting. Okay, that'll be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Might have been that. Why are we reversing somebody for a passport license? I'm not getting that. What? Uh, what's the question? Well, it's check number 25521. And it's $35 to reimburse a class a firefighter class four license fee. I'm wondering why do we why would we I I can only guess which means I shouldn't answer, so I have to leave. Okay. I, I just <clears throat> it struck me as strange. Okay, by the fire. The, uh, you might know. I, I think about that. Two two five, 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 two, in one. the collective agreement, like if we require a specialized, like an increased driver's license, um, we were the town is supposed to reimburse <coughs> and pay for that. Um, for what? Not to, so, I well, remember right. Isn't it a? It's not really our requirements, or isn't it a requirement of the Highway Traffic Act? Yeah, but like. Um, it may be like there's we have a clause in the collective agreement that say a public works person needs a class three to operate a, a dump truck. Um, oh, yeah. We have to pay the cost of that. Well, okay. I would have said that differently, but anyway, I, I'll leave it for now when you're negotiating because uh, candidly, it's not our. If we required them to have special training or a special license, yes, I agree. But the problem is that they can't drive a fire truck or a dump truck. That's not our problem. That's their problem. They have to come qualified to do it. It's not us requiring it. It's that they are required to do it in order to drive that truck. Um, but I think in the fire department, not all of them are able to drive. So if they're required to be a pump operator, uh, okay. I, 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 I see why. I, like it's only thirty-five dollars. I'm not. I don't want to get into a big fight over yeah. it. Just strikes me. Yeah. It's one of those things that yeah. it's a creeping thing. Yeah, for me, it's just like operationally, you don't want to uh, limit yourself to a small number of vehicle operators, um, and then you'll be like other departments there where you have ten guys show up to go fight fire, but they can't leave the hall because they don't have a licensed driver to fire drive fire trucks. Could you read? Uh, Notice of motion number 12, because I didn't hear back from you. Sorry. Sure, I'll try. We're, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. I wanted him to be on the oh, same you're page just, when we got Oh, there. okay, you're just warning him, okay. We're still on the account, so uh, any further discussion? Uh, the mail had told me. <coughs> It was, the, I have a, what, sorry, the question was, there we go. It was to check number 25465, Emergency Operations Center Sign Kit. We have a center? Or yeah, that would be for EM low cost, I'm sure. Yes. The one that I may have missed, that one, is that where That's exactly what it is, yes. It, we, we had a, we had a uh, training day and uh, some signs were required, so. Okay, perfect. 
I would have known that if I would have attended. I apologize. That was all I had. Okay. <laughs> Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Councilor Gray? No, I'm fine. I, I have one more question. I just I knew what it was. 25492. Um, this, that's the matter we're going to cover, but we have we paid for winter clothing? Yeah, he submitted it before. Right? Okay, good. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I'm in favor. Okay, it's carried. <clears throat> Sorry. It's all right. <clears throat> Resolve the financial statements for the 11 months ending November 30th, 2019, be adopted as received. Moved by Councilor Morio, second by Councilor White. Discussion? Councilor Morio? Um, in review, that I, I've noticed that uh, we have a large outstanding balance uh, from our two uh, neighboring municipalities um, regard, regarding uh, uh, contributions to recreation and uh, fire protection uh, for their share of the funding for that. Um, do we know if that funding or their contributions have shown up in December yet, or do we need to uh, provide them a gently reminder that uh, funds are owing because it's a significant amount. I will uh, I will check with Terry and, and mm -hmm. get back to you. Councilor Deloria. Do they get invoiced for shared services quarterly or or, what, or just once a year? Or? I, I can check with okay. Terry and find out exactly what's going on there. Okay. Councilor Morio. That's all. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Result of bylaw 8 2019 the bylaw of the town of Swan River to provide for the expenditure and borrowing of funds for the construction of the new well control building, including programming, monitoring, isolation capabilities, connections to existing wells, connections to existing raw water supply, and auxiliary works be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. This is the bylaw 9, 2019, being the bylaw of the town of Swan River to provide for the expenditure and borrowing of funds for construction of the Centen Swan River Centennial Arena Fusion welded floor, including installing temporary mechanical piping, sand floor and with new header system, removal of old header system, raising boards, leveling, existing floor, installation, installing, it's insulation and vapor barrier and other required works therefore be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by <clears throat> Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Result of the bylaw 10 2019 being the bylaw of the town of Swan River to provide for the expenditure and borrowing of funds to replace the public safety communications or fleet that radio equipment be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Notice of motion 12. <coughs> could, could I just give a preamble to that? Sure. <coughs> Excuse me? Could, could I just give a preamble to that? Go ahead. Uh, so Terry was uh, Terry was instructed by the province that we need to rescind that motion, and oh, another okay. one needs to be brought back. Yeah. And uh, I I sent out an email asking who would like to do this because we have to we have to do it in a certain way. Uh, so I, I suggested that sure. you would be selected because you made the motion originally. Yeah. So then there's no controversy. The yeah. original. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Then. I don't remember seeing it, but sure, I'm good with it. I just didn't remember doing it. I was thinking, holy cow, <laughs> I'm getting awfully forgetful. Okay, good. Uh, resolved that the pursuit of the Now, sections. I won't be here on the 21st. I don't think it matters, does it? The motion has to be put forward by that person to rescind. That's, that's the only issue. So okay. unless I phone in. Phone in. Could, could you phone in? And I can phone in. Okay. I think. I don't know where I am on the 21st exactly, but... I'll so we'll in, have to remember that. Yeah, I'll be in Granada, I think. I'm not sure where I am. Maybe send, maybe send them a message on the 20th to yeah. remind them. That's what I'm doing here. <laughs> and again at 6.30. <laughs> and the next morning also. Okay. 
<clears throat> resolved that pursuant to section 153 of the municipal act the council go into committee and close the meeting to the public to discuss the following items well labor issues some legal and crime issues as well moved by deputy mayor one tony second by councilor friesen all in favor opposed it's carried Okay, number 15, direction in, uh, direction from in camera, 15.1. Resolve that administration re advertise for the assistant CAO position and the CAO be authorized to hire the best candidate. Moved by. Oh, sorry, I thought we were doing the other one first, which was what I was ready for. The, the committee one? Yeah. Sorry. Okay. That's what I heard Mr. Grace. Well, I just agree. suggested that was non contentious so it doesn't matter to me. I just... Okay, then we'll just wait for... We caught up here then. I didn't mean to... Non-contentious with this team? I didn't mean to stall. Apologize. Oh. Sure, it's my pills. Tomorrow, by the way. So they don't send you that stuff anymore. Go ahead. They haven't sent you. Are you taking my place on there? You can have it. No, I, we're both on there. Well, they don't send me nothing. I'll make that. I'll, I'll change that. Send me the details. And what, what time tomorrow? Eleven. Eleven. Chamber. Chamber is eleven. Seven p.m. Yeah. yeah. No one's been sending me agendas or minutes or stuff. I was going to talk to Stacy. Hey, what is this still going on? When did Minish get on there? I wasn't invited to the party. They yeah, all talked about the date, but no one told me the date. Is it there, Charles? Uh, everyone's up there. Really? I I'm only fifteen point one that I have to do. Uh, Pretty just fresh. Yeah, just refresh. Get refresh. Where's refresh? Uh, just go up to your uh, go up to your address bar. Yeah. Click on it, and then push enter arrow. again. Mm -hmm. Is that an iPad there, Council You get it? Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, fifteen point two. Okay. No, I logged myself out, so it should load me down. Yeah. Yeah. One of these little spinny things, or you just hit that. And then it just reloads. Oh, I see. Yeah, I got it. I just go out and then they come up. Well, hiring the system CEO, rear drive position. You said the third one's there already? No. No.
Entering the room, might as well do the the uh, with the other ones with the John. Okay, so 15.1. Resolved that the administration administration re advertise for the assistant CAO position and the CAO be authorized to hire the best candidate. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Morio. All in favor? Well, uh, I just want to correct my uh, comment. Okay. I speak against oh, sorry, this I because I, I speak against the resolution because I have another resolution coming that authorizes the action that we've already previously uh, authorized. And while there's no, the resolution that oh, we, did we start the, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yes. the resolution that we, that we passed didn't have the specifics, it did justify that. Um, secondly, um, even if this was to pass, it's, the process should be exactly the same. If you're going to re-advertise or redo the position, if you're going to recall the position, the process should be, we start the process over, um, in honesty. But, so I disagree with the motion, even as it's worded, but I disagree with the content in the first place. Okay. Discussion? Councillor McToney. I just want it to be noted on the record that there's a difference between the advertising for the dollar amount and to the record or the resolution that will be next of about $20,000 difference in salary. For the discussion? I can't note that on the record. No, no. give yeah. notes. Yeah, that's right. Um, to a substantial amount there, there of money. There is no well, that are on. It, it won't be in the, in the oh, minutes. No, it won't be in the minutes. Right, yeah, that's fine. That's what's still going to be. Yeah. Could you read it again? Okay. Resolve that the administration re advertise for the assistant CAO and the. C um, I've got you on speakerphone. Resolved that the administration re-advertise for the assistant CAO position and the CAO be authorized to hire the best candidate. Further, dis further discussion? The Are you still in your meeting? Yes. Okay, we'll pull you back. <clears throat> okay, all in favor? Opposed? It's defeated. 15-2. Resolve that Patty Hinkleman be offered the position of assistant CEO and that if accepted, her salary be frozen at the current level until council determines the salary scale is equal to her current salary. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. We still have one more resolution. Yeah, two, actually, uh, or two more. I, I, I overrode one. Okay, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> really? Uh, oh, it's still not there. Okay, if you go to, if you refresh and go to uh, number fifteen. Yep. Yeah, I'm that, there. That's oh, what okay. I oh, you I put it. it there? There. No, I, I overrode it by mistake. Yeah, I see where it is. You can always fix it afterwards. I'll move that. Resolve that CAO be authorized to hire a recreation director and a maximum starting salary of $60,000 per year. Moved by Councillor Gray. Seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? 
Opposed? It's carried. Now we have one more. We do. And I'm just, uh, <coughs> what's that about? That was that the stage two committee for the grievance brought to council shall be Charles Curl, Derek Poole, Patty Hinkleman. Because we used to do that, like it's very specific, and then we went to this, but then it's ambiguous, and then you get into this, um, well, and, and you don't have the you don't have the recording to go back to. It, um, if there's a report, if if you have the time to write a report from the committee or whatever, then and then you can adopt, you can say these are the recommendations, and you can fudge it a little bit. Even then, I prefer the resolution to speak specific. That way, there's no dispute about what you want exactly. to do. Then that gives a certain clear direction on very specific things. Can you find policy? How do you find then, policy? Like you said before, if you don't like it, then you can always do uh, notice a motion. Exactly. Or whatever. Do whatever you're going to do. Yeah, exactly. I want something to you. Or except that you made a mistake. Mm -hmm. That's what What's Johnny, that's what Johnny and I had to do on the motion on the wells. Mm -hmm. He brought it in, got the legal mm -hmm. opinion. Mm -hmm. It would cost us double. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we have 15, 15 minutes left. Okay, there you go. Okay. <clears throat> Refresh. Mm -hmm. Here we are, 15-3. Resolve that stage two grievance committee be made up of Charles Kroll, Derek Poole, and Patty Hinkleman. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Done there. Resolve that this regular meeting of council now be adjourned. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, all in favor. It's carried. It's not debatable.